when I talked to you last, you were directing uh, one of the uh, shorts for VHS. I want to talk to you a little bit about the different challenges from directing VHS to something like Drinking Buddies. Uh, what do they uh, both do for you creatively, and what do they both kind of challenge you with creatively? It's interesting because I, I I do feel that horror films and comedy films sort of rely on the same kind of timing in terms of, mm-hmm. uh, of the editing and, and, you know, the build-up to a joke or, you know, the build-up to a scare um, and then the moment of release afterward. You know, you sort of uh, – the two genres have, have quite a bit of overlap. But, um, you know, with VHS it was fun because we knew that that – we only had to do about 15 minutes, you know, so so mm-hmm. you, you get a little more experimental. Um, for instance, choosing to have the whole thing take place within Skype windows uh, is not something that I would choose to do for a feature film, you know, but, but for a short segment um, seemed right. So, so on a technical level, it was different. And also with VHS, uh, there was a lot more choreography involved. You know, we, we sort of knew that we were going to be doing these long takes and, and because uh, there weren't traditional cuts because we were sort of within the Skype window, um, we had to really block it out and, and, and shoot those sequences in a very sort of deliberate manner. Um, with Drinking Buddies, it's more, you know, it's sort of much more in line with, with the other films that I've made. And uh, there's a much a freer, looser sort of feeling to the performances and um, to the way that it's shot. Um, but, you know, they're, they're, I love doing them both. I actually hope, I hope to do more horror stuff. Um, and then, cha- you know, challenge-wise, uh, I, I placed a, a lot of pressure on myself with Drinking Buddies that I didn't, have with VHS uh, because Drinking Buddies was going to be so much bigger than anything I had done before, you know, so I I mm-hmm. really um, I wanted to rise to the occasion and, and make a film that, that you know, connected with a bigger audience and that, but that also maintained uh, the kind of intimacy and, and spontaneity and, and you know, realness of, of the other movies that I had made so, um Every day on set, I I sort of had to figure that out and and navigate that you know my instincts to like go small and and naturalistic versus uh, a desire to open the movie up and and sort of have it feel um, bigger and more comprehensive than anything I had done. But it, you know it was great. It was it was a, a nice challenge to have. Mm-hmm. When I talked to you last time, Joe, um, you were telling me about how you've always been fascinated um, by relationships and how they work with um, communication. Uh, with this film, um, Drinking Buddies, uh, what are you discovering about uh, relationships that you're using in your films now and evolving with? Well, you know, the big the big question that we asked ourselves with Drinking Buddies was, can can men and women be friends? And and especially, can can a man and a woman who are attracted to each other be friends. We tried to explore that, you know, this sort of the ins and outs of that topic. I think some some personal feelings that I have that I put into the movie are that uh, it, it's, it's entirely possible for men and women to be friends, and I actually think that they can be great friends. Um, but I do think that the whatever the sort of uh, attraction and, and sort of sexual nature of the relationship is, it needs to be addressed. You know, I think that it's, it's hard for men and women to be friends if they don't acknowledge uh, the attraction in one way or another. Um, but if they if if they can get over it, um, then I think that that those can be great friendships. You know, um, mm-hmm. you know the other thing that that hopefully the movie deals with that that I think is interesting is that you it's not always the best situation to be in a relationship with somebody who's exactly like you. Um, mm-hmm. it, nice to have balance in relationships, you know, and so uh, people who seem like an obvious fit with each other aren't necessarily uh, going to have the healthiest relationship, um, even though it maybe seems more fun or more obvious. Um, so we, we we tried to explore that, too, to really get into the I- idea of sort of uh, taking taking these four different characters who all were at different points in their lives and had different kinds of things going on and, and 
playing around with the attractions between all of them and the different scenarios and, and sort of seeing which ones made the most sense. Mm-hmm. And what I'm finding very fascinating right now, Joe, is uh, films like yours, uh, films like The Spectacular Now, films like The Way, Way Back. It seems like these films are really catching the attention of the audience this summer. And we've seen a lot of um, big uh, blockbusters that are flopping and not doing so well. Do you think that audiences are looking for something more, something to, I guess, uh, laugh, entertain, and think about in today's market? I I do think so. I think that, you know, there's a there's a very uh, successful Hollywood marketing machine that's, that that still exists that's going to be able to, um, you know, force force these movies into the marketplace in a way that that they'll they'll get the kind of attention that that will guarantee us at least a certain level of success even if it's disappointing for the studio. Um, but yeah, you know, I I, I think that. Uh, you know, we're finding ourselves very deep into a sequel and franchise culture, and mm-hmm. uh, I think that there's just some natural burnout and fatigue that comes from uh, complete lack of originality, you know? So uh, if you've spent all summer watching uh, part twos and threes and fours and fives of movies or, <laughs> uh, you know, remakes of old TV shows or whatever, you know, you sort of... Uh, I do think people want to be told new stories, or they at least want to be told uh, familiar stories in new ways. So uh, it's it's encouraging to me that that some of the the big successes this year are uh, coming from the sort of lower budget sphere, you know. And I also think that uh, you know the the crop of young filmmakers that that started doing their you know, and I'll include myself in this group of people that sort of had our first features um, come out around 2005, you know, so it's so it's been almost a decade. Uh, you know, I think that we're seeing that the, the sort of uh, maturation process of that, you know, so mm-hmm. uh, David Lowry's got Ain't and Body Saints coming out um, and and James has a spectacular now and, and you know, Ty West's new movie is gonna premiere uh in Vienna and then it's gonna go to Toronto and uh you know, you we're just at a point where a lot of us are doing our biggest movies, you know, sort of a, a lot mm-hmm. of us who've been working together and, and sort of um oh and and Bujowski's new movie is out now which is which is doing I think better than any of his previous films. So it's really cool. Uh to, to just sort of see that, um, you know, the the period where we were sort of building our audience is, is uh, sort of reaching a crescendo moment and people are working with bigger actors and, and the movies are just being seen by more people. Mm-hmm. And with uh, Drinking Buddies, I'm sure as a director you couldn't have asked for a uh, better cast and from following the movie on uh, Twitter and following the stars of the film, it seems like everyone really believed in this and they all came to work. Uh, what's it like for you as a director when you have a, a great cast that really believes in what you're doing? Well, that's, I mean, that's the ticket, right? I mean, that that's sort of, uh, I feel like every, every movie I've ever like really fallen in love with, it, that's, that's sort of what you hear is that, you know, everybody was on the same page and they were happy to be working together. You know, I mean, th- th- there's a lot to be said for, for creative, uh, talented people doing their best work, you know? Um, and so I felt really lucky to have those actors there and, and, you know, especially lucky that they, that they chose to be there, you know, that they wanted to, um, be part of this project and they, and that they wanted it to be good. Um, so that, I mean, that was a thrill. It was a thrill while we were shooting it and it's been amazing, you know, now that, now that the movie is starting to get out into the world, that they're still behind it and that they're still, uh, doing everything they can to, to try and get people to see it. Um, but also they're, they're, I mean, these four actors are always really good, you know, so, (laughs) right. uh, so there was that too, which was like really exciting to be uh, working with people who I'm a fan of, you know, who who I've seen in other people's movies and have been blown away by. So uh, it was great. 
And Joe, what I'm really impressed with um, from you is every time I talk to you, I always sense the passion and the excitement and the joy. And I never sense any cynicism or getting burnt out by the process. How do you keep the creative juices uh, burning and flowing even when you're always so busy and uh, and doing so much? Well, I think I'm always so busy because I like doing it so much. Um, mm-hmm. It's really it's fun to be on sets. You know, it, it, it's uh, it's it's an addictive atmosphere to to sort of you know be around people who are all uh working and excited and and being creative and uh and so as soon as one thing's done I, you know I, I can't wait to jump back into the next one um and it's also a chance to learn you know it's it, every, every movie i do whether i'm acting in it or or directing it or or producing it or whatever um it's a chance to meet new people. It's a chance to explore different subjects. It's a chance to learn new things. Like I, you know, I, f- I feel like I'm, I'm just constantly in school and I like school. Um, so, you know, I, I, there's nothing, nothing really to get burnt out by, you know, the only thing that ever, uh, that ever like wears me down is, is the travel and being away from my family. You know, that, that's sort of the only, um, negative aspect to it but but the creative process of of starting with nothing and and working with a lot of people to make a movie is so uh constantly rewarding that that i'm that i'm always just thrilled to to be some level of participant in it a film that you're a part of as an actor is getting a lot of positive buzz in um your next i would like to be a part of that project for you that was amazing. I mean, that was uh, that was really the first uh, chance I had to see two, you know, good friends of mine who, you know, I kind of knew when they were, uh, like, with Adam Wingard. Like, I met him when his first feature, Pop Skull, was playing around, and he and I collaborated on a lot of stuff. And then I got to know Simon, uh, Simon Barrett, and. You know, it was amazing to see these two friends of mine really rise to the occasion and and you know take on this bigger project than they had done before and and really uh, uh, connect with an audience in such a major way. So you know, the the process of being there as an actor on set was really fun, and then like hearing the stories from Toronto of how uh, how great the reception to the movie was, and then having Lionsgate buy. You know, every every step of the way, it's been this amazing. Uh, series of events and then you know the the time that's passed between when it premiered and now that it's finally coming out there's a lot of different uh rumors floating around about whether it would ever come out or it would go straight to dvd or who knows what was going to happen with it um but it's it, it it's amazing to to drive around you know i i live in chicago and and i got on this on the subway the other day to go to the airport and there was a you know three different your next uh posters around the subway and then uh i'm in la right now for drinking buddy stuff but everywhere i drive i see your next billboards i mean it's crazy you know this is uh <laughs> this is not a movie that a- any of us expected was going to be uh released on you know 2100 screens all over the country and that we could like go see it at multiplexes so it's it's the whole thing's been really thrilling I know filmmakers talk a lot about a, a dream project or a project that they really want to get off the ground or something that's been working on for a long time. Do you have one of those dream projects that hasn't been made yet that you really, really, really want to get made? Well, you know, I, I uh, I'm super, uh, I'm super fascinated by and and I've read a lot about uh, revolutionary American history. So, mm-hmm. like that's a, that's a period of time and and subject matter that I would love to make something about at some point, especially. Uh, John Adams is somebody who um, I'm really into, but you know they just did the Paul Giamatti John Adams series, so it's probably going to be a little while before I could convince anybody to jump back into that territory. And then also, you know, I would love to make like a big sprawling epic about the history of beer, um, sort of starting from you know the very early origins of of accidentally discovering. Uh, you know, the elements of, of making beer all the way through, like, you know, the sort of modern industrial age of, of beer making. Um, 
So, you know, if somebody handed me a blank check, that might be what I would go off and do.